Along with diffuse, three other materials have no sliders. They get most of their properties from the color you select for them. You can select files for two of them, but it would be unusual that you would use files with these guys. And those three guys are specular, illumination, and ambient. I want to explain those three materials in this lesson. So to follow along, let's go to Working Files, go to Photoshop Projects, and open up Materials PSD. We've seen this guy before. I want to work on the sphere here. Click on it with the Selection tool. Click again to select the sphere material. And these are the three I'm talking about, specular, illumination, and ambient. Specular is the color of the specular highlight. Now it looks like it's kind of blue there, but it's not. It's gray. It's dark gray or gray by default, a neutral color. The color that's showing up there is the color that you get when you bounce a light or a neutral light off of this blue surface when it's got a curve to it like that. But you can change the specular highlight color. Let's go over there and click on it, click on the color swatch, and change the color. And as we change it, you'll see the changes begin to show up over there on that sphere. Pick another color over here, and you'll see them show up there. So if you want to change the specular highlight color, this is how you do it, like that. I'll change it to red like that, click OK. The size of the specular highlight color is set by shine. The smaller the number, the larger the shine, so you basically cover almost the entire object. And then the larger the number, the smaller the highlight, like so. Now the specular highlight is coming from the light that's illuminating the scene, the infinite light there. Infinite light is right up there, and this is the controller for it. When I click on it, you see it there. If I turn it off, you won't see a specular highlight. In fact, you won't see much of anything at all. I'm going to go over to environment here. The reason for that is because the global light, as it's called, is black. I can increase the intensity of this black light, and eventually it kind of illuminates the scene. But you notice there aren't any specular highlights. There's really nothing pointing at these guys. Just an overall lighting for the scene. So the specular highlight comes from this light here. I'll turn that back on. That illuminates the scene from a great distance. This is an infinite light, as if it were sunlight. Go back to the sphere material again. I'm going to go back to specular here and change it back to the neutral gray, because I want to see how that works with these other guys. So click on that. Go back to neutral gray like that. Click OK. Next one down is illumination. Illumination makes something glow from within. Notice that the default setting is black. It means there's no light coming from within it. If I start just ramping this thing up, you see it starts glowing. It glows in the color that it's set to, like that, because I'm just raising this from black to white. I'm not putting any color in it, I'm just changing the brightness of it. This is how you control intensity with these three things, specular, illumination, and ambient. You control it with the relative brightness of the color you're selecting here. Let's have it glow a different color. Pick green there, for example. Start pulling it toward green. You see how that affects the blue when it mixes together. How about red? Mix it with blue to make purple like a little light bulb inside there. That's how that works. Now when you change something like this, you would think that it would start showing up on objects around it. It won't because you need to render these guys. It's kind of a glow. It doesn't show up unless you render it with the ray trace renderer. So I'm going to close this down for now. And let's see how that looks. I'm going to take my selection tool and just select an area here, down here on the table, like that, and part of this guy next to it. And we'll render that so it's a smaller area. And see what happens. See if the table kind of picks up the glow a little bit. A little bit of a pinkish glow coming in right down there from that object. Also a little bit of a glow falling on this cylinder too. So I think you can see how that works. It does throw a little bit of a glow on the surface down here. If this were just the standard Photoshop ground plane, the glow would not show up there. You need to put a surface there for the glow to actually show up. All right, let's talk about ambient. I'm going to take the glow here back to its normal setting, which is black, and talk about ambient now. Ambient is the color of the entire scene, the color of the room in which this object resides. There's an overall environment ambient color, and then there's this ambient for individual objects. So right now, the overall environment ambient color for everything here is black. I'll show you that by going to environment. The top here, global ambient is black. So I'll go back to the sphere. If I change its ambient to change the color of the room it's in to something else, its own little color room, I'll click on ambient there. I'll take it to a really bright color, like bright red. And notice nothing happens. Click OK, nothing. That's because the ambient for the environment just overrides that because it's black. The black here in the environment wins, basically. If I change this to something else, I'll click on that. I'll change it to something that's not so black. I'll just raise it up a bit like that and make it a little bit brighter. OK. Let's try this again. Click on you again with the selection tool. Go to its ambient. Let's change its ambient to something obviously different. Let's say green here. Now you do see that it does kind of now supersede the ambient from the room. It kind of now overrides the ambient from the room because the ambient room is no longer black. So you can determine kind of an overall color scheme for something individually like this, just for the object, not for both of them at once, just for the single object. 
It's a little more dramatic when you have a color like yellow, which is lighter. I'll click OK. Let's check this one out here. I'll click on you once, click on you again. The cylinder material selected. Let's change its ambient from the default black to something else. Go over here to green. Notice that it shows up much more dramatically than the blue. And again, this happens because the environment is set to some other color besides black. All right, let's change the environment back to black and see what happens to those two guys. Bring this down to black now, and you notice that those two guys no longer have any effect at all. The ambient black here for the entire scene now basically overrides any kind of ambient color changes that you put in there. So that is how these three materials work, specular, illumination, and ambient.